All right, it's time once again to look at the prediction results. How bad did I do this year? Why do I hear boss music? Let's begin and find out how bad I did at this. First prediction in trucks. Prediction number one. John Hunter Nemechek and Chandler Smith will combine for 10 truck series wins. No, sorry. So Chandler did really good again. And should have won the championship, but we won't talk about that. Um, he should have gotten four wins this year. Chandler should have. And Nemechek was just terrible, so I really can't find, like... He only won twice. Nemechek was just awful, but he deserves it, because he's a douche. Anyway, um... So, yeah, I, I can't find another four races for either of these guys to win, sadly. But, hey, you know, they tried, kind of. Nemechek really didn't, though. Prediction number two. Todd Bodine will get one top ten during his return tour. That's it! Great! Hey! I got a correct prediction. Yeah, he got exactly one top ten. What a legend. Will we ever see the onion again? I don't know. Maybe we will. Who knows? Prediction number three. Matt DiBenedetto will finally, finally... Finish second in a truck race. I don't know what to say. I was going to make this Matt Benedetto winning a race. I was, but like, I legitimately, when I made the video, I was like, no, there is no chance. He, he can't. There's no way. He never will win. However, this prediction is still correct. This prediction is still correct because in the Talladega truck race, he finished the race in second. Brett Holmes finished the race first. But he didn't take home the win. So therefore, this is still a correct prediction because the Benedetto really did finish second in a truck race. I am smart. Thank you. Prediction number four. Timmy Hill will win in the truck series. No, sorry. Timmy Hill did not win a race in the truck series. He was pretty mediocre, but he still finished ahead of Haley Deegan in points. That would have been a much better prediction to make, but this one was funnier, <laughs> and I didn't even consider it back then. But yes, Timmy Hill beat Haley Deegan in points. That is pretty, pretty incredible. And prediction number five, Grant and Finger will win the championship. No, sorry. Grant and Finger did not win the championship, as, in, as a matter of fact. I mean, he was pretty slow. I mean, he was he was close at Homestead. I said he was going to win Homestead, and he was close there. But he just wasn't good enough to make the Final Four. And then even then, at Phoenix, he was never really a part of the conversation. So I don't think he had a chance at winning the championship. I should stop making championship prediction winners at the start of the season, as opposed to, you know, before the chase starts, when, you know, we could get an idea of how the year is going. Prediction number one. Ty Gibbs will win nine races. No, sorry. Ty Gibbs only won seven times. He should have won way more, though. Um, but he got the trophy that matters the most, so who cares? <laughs> who cares, quite frankly? I did not like Ty Gibbs when I made this video. Now I do. Amazing how times change. Prediction number two. A.J. Allmendinger will win every road course race. No, sorry. So Allmendinger had the best car at road courses every race except for one. Except for Road America. He was definitely the best everywhere else, though. Um, he was just not good enough to win Road America. I think he still finished third or something. And we're not going to talk about what happened at Watkins Glen. That race sucked ass. But he should have won every race except for Road America, so the pain is real, basically. Prediction number three. Terrible Herps will miss the chase. No, sorry. Unfortunately, Xfinity was not fun enough this year for there to be enough random winners to kick Herps out of the chase, but he still managed to go on to do absolutely nothing once he did make the chase. That's a way less interesting prediction, though, so you know how it goes. Prediction number four, Landon Castle will win four poles. No, sorry. Landon Castle did neither. 
Um, he was terrible in qualifying this year, but Call League as a whole was absolute garbage besides Almendinger. So, it's not that surprising. Maybe they'll actually not suck in 2023, but, like, I'm not exactly holding my breath on that one. Because apparently, not only are they going to continue running two full-time cup cars, but, like, they're going to expand to, like, a fourth um, part-time Xfinity car, which is the exact opposite of what they need to do. So, that's wonderful. But in any case, yeah, Castle, he was fine. He was always getting garbage equipment because he kept blowing up in the first 20 laps for, like, the first half of the season. So they definitely were not treating him fairly. He he was kind of screwed out of the chase in that sense, in that they actually had, like, you know, prepared his car. He did better than Jeb Burton in any case. But, yeah, I know he's coming back next year, so maybe he'll win next year. Who knows? You'll have to wait until the predictions video for 2023 to find out that one. Ah. And prediction number five, Daniel Hemrick will repeat as champion. No, sorry. Once again, I had not anticipated colleagues sucking as much as it did. However, Ham Hemrick was the worst driver on the team, which says a lot. Um, I don't know if he's going to get any better next year, but once again, if Colleague, you know, focuses on what they have instead of expanding, probably they'll expand in the truck series next for all we know, but hey. Hey, maybe, maybe Hemrick will not suck next year. <laughs> maybe. Heavy emphasis on baby. Prediction number one. William Byron will win more than once. That's it. Great. William Byron finally won more than once in a season, and it was at two of the worst races of the entire year. Wonder if there's a coincidence in there. Prediction number two. Ryan Blaney will be the only Penske winner. This prediction should have come true because he should have won the Daytona 500 and then went on to be the lead Penske driver for the season. Unfortunately, his teammate put him in the wall at the last possible second and ruined any chances that he had of having a good season because from there he had to play catch up for the entirety of the second half of the summer and for the entirety of the chase because clearly he had the best car at Phoenix and definitely should have won the race at Phoenix, but he didn't because he was fending off Ross Chastain. So therefore, Ryan Blaney not only should have been the only Penske winner this year, but he also should have won the championship. Yet somehow we managed to stumble into the worst possible timeline for the Cup Series. Nothing surprising there though, because the Cup Series has not been good since 2016. Prediction number three. Austin Dillon will win again. Stay safe. He did, in fact, win again. That was one of the uh, tougher, tougher predictions that I had to make on this uh, season, but I, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen, and it was in probably the worst race that has ever happened in the history of the Cup Series, barring Talladega 2015 chase. But he still won, so, you know. Prediction number four. There will be 15 different winners and three first-time winners. <laughs> There were 19 different winners this season, and normally, if I get a and and if I get a prediction, you know, like if I say Nemechek wins three races and he actually wins four races, then that's still a accurate prediction. But for this one, this one is like I'm trying to get the exact number, and I did not get the exact number. So yeah, but hey, there were 15 different winners before the chase happened. Does that count for anything? No, no, it does not count for anything. Prediction number five. Kyle Larson will have the least amount of wins of all Hendrick drivers. No! This is a prediction that also should have been accurate. Bowman kind of sucked this year. He kind of just cut put it around for the entire season. But Larson should not have won California, and he should not have won Watkins Glen. There, and there's an argument for Homestead, but he should not have won that either. So basically, Larson should have won zero races this year. So that's cool. Thanks, world. Prediction number six. Brad Keselowski will win in the RFK number six. <laughs> I was almost correct about this one, too. He did have the best car at Bristol, but then the next-gen car was a piece of shit like it's been all year. And we were uh, spared from a Brad Keselowski victory, but it was still a Brad Keselowski victory. 
because the 17 won. But I did specifically say it had to be the 6 car, so this prediction is wrong. But it should not have been wrong. Is one there was a lot of predictions on this list that should have been correct, but due to the shittiness of the next gen and just the shittiest shittiness of, next, of NASCAR in general, it's all been prevented. But hey, you know, I tried. I try my best on this channel. Prediction number 7. Eric Jones makes the chase. Ty Dillon will finish 24th in points. Why are you still watching this? Like, honestly. <laughs> I'm not even trying at this point. This is another prediction that should have been correct. <laughs> because Darlington should be the chase cutoff race and not fucking Daytona. But we're going to ignore that entirely. Where did, uh, where did El Plastic finish in points? I was wrong. He finished 29th. Jeez, I thought, I thought I was being... I thought I was being reasonable when I said 24th in points. I was thinking people in the comment section would be like, Oh, you're just being mean. You're just being mean. No, he did even worse. He did even worse than I expected. Now that's saying something. That's a bad season right there. Prediction number eight. Kurt Busch's allotted one win of the season will come at Richmond. It in fact came at Kansas. And unfortunately... Kurt Busch's career came to an end because of the terrible next-gen car. Will they ever just go just go back to the old cars? No, we're not just going to go back to the old cars. We're going to try and continue to just waste away all of our, you know, talent in their prime. You know, Kurt Busch could have gone another five years. He was probably set up to do exactly that. He was in perfect position. He was in perfect position to carry out the summer of his life at 23XI, but thanks to NASCAR's horrendous car design and lack of fucks given and complete uh, disregard to the health and safety of their own drivers, Kurt Busch now has to retire. Thanks, NASCAR. And prediction number nine, Rick Ware Racing will win. How? Why did this happen? Okay, that was the worst prediction on this list. I didn't actually believe it at the time. I'll be honest, I did not have any faith in this one coming true. But, like, we had a chance at Daytona. We had a chance with Joey Ham and his expertise. But um, I don't think Rick Ware is going to improve over the offseason. I feel like they're pretty much stagnating at this point. They did not get the assistance that they needed from uh, Stuart Haas. And the rumor is that Cole Custer is going to go to there, but like, no, he's not. He will be in the 41 car for uh, as long as his career lasts. Unless he pulls a Brian Scott and retires at age 29, he's going to be in that car for the next 20 years. So, y'all just better get used to it. And the final prediction of the year was Denny Hamlin winning the Daytona 500. Because I thought that, you know, experience would prevail. But nothing matters, as we have firmly established over the course of this season. Absolutely nothing matters, and the worst possible outcome is going to be the outcome that comes every single time. We'll keep that in mind for the 2023 season. Thank you all so much for watching this prediction results video, and I hope to see you in whatever it is that I do next. Bye!